Moving on down the line, now we've got our breeders. Feed mills now producing the feed. So now we've got our breeders that these ones are able to produce the chickens that are going to produce all the eggs that create our meat animals. All of the animals that are, <clears throat> all the breeding animals here, all of their offspring is going to go into broilers. So all the offspring from breeders, parents become broilers for the market. These animals are kept under pretty tight lock and key. There needs to be some pretty strict biosecurity so that nothing gets in there to kill off. These are the genetics. This is what we have. They have been specifically designed with different breeding to make sure that these animals are producing the best genetics possible. So the eggs come from these chickens and then they're gonna go to the hatchery. From the hatchery, this is a specialized facility that is designed to receive fertile eggs from the breeder farms, place them in incubators. You can see these incubating trays. These trays will rotate on a specific timer because if they stay in one spot, the chick will actually grow to the shell, which this is going to mimic a hen rotating her eggs and then keeping it at an, at an appropriate temperature and humidity level so that those chicks can hatch to the best of their ability. Then towards the end of the incubation, they're going to be put in hatching trays where chicks are going to hatch by pecking their way through the large end of the egg. Now, after they've hatched, there's a little bit of processing that goes on, but then they're going to go to the grow-out farms. These grow-out farms are where independent farmers, so somebody who owns their own chicken barn, they're going to raise them to market weight under contract with the company. They don't actually own the chickens themselves. The chickens are the company's chickens. They've simply just got the got all the chicks in there. They've turned them loose. The company is going to provide the feed and any necessary pharmaceuticals. With that, the farmer itself provides the water, bedding, or litter, electricity, and his or own management skills. Once the chickens reach market weight in six or seven weeks, so keep in mind, this is under two months. These are, sh these are short-lived animals, are collected and transported to the processing plant. At the processing plant, they will be harvested according to USDA inspection. So they're going to be humanely harvested. They're going to be checked for any disease or defects. The carcasses are then going to be chilled to limit the growth of bacteria. Generally, that's going to be under about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. You thought my handwriting was bad on a whiteboard. And then after that, they're packaged for distribution or they're cut into parts. They can be packaged for distribution as a whole bird or cut into the parts such as these thighs here, legs here. Oh, those look like boneless, skinless breasts, but they look a little dark in that picture. I don't know. Anyway, so you can see that on a store shelf. That's ready to go. But you may actually have some further processing going on. How many of you like your chicken nuggets? So we have some specialized operation plants who receive a whole chicken or they can receive cut up parts and they have some further processing that can happen such as cooking, breading, or marinating. In this case, they're trying to make a specialized product that's ready to go off into a ready to eat market. These chicken nuggets here, you can buy them at the store and they are actually considered ready to eat. You just need to heat them up so that they're, you don't know, chip a tooth on them when they're frozen. Well, then the last part of the whole process, they've got to get them somewhere. They're going to put them in refrigerated trucks and then ship them out either to distribution centers, right to the grocery store, to the restaurants, or other customers, whoever has ordered them. Now, what this does is this vertical integration provides some pretty good value to this economy. What it does is it allows one company to control the product all the way through so that you're going to get a high quality product and it's also going to eliminate a lot of the middlemen that are trying to make their profits along the way. This means you can get a high quality product and it's also going to be very affordable. It's going to be affordable so the chicken now has become one of the cheapest proteins you can buy. So that's your vertical integration in two videos. We'll go over chicken breeds next. I know you're on pins and needles.